A very good morning to the panel of examiners. My name is Chukalok, and today I'll be presenting my FYP entitled Wind Profiling and its Effective Ventilation Around Low Cost Apartments. My supervisor is Prof. Dr. Norma Mohamed Ghazali. Well, before I start, I want to inform all of you, the panel of examiners, that I was supposed to obtain my result by wind tunnel experiment, but because of COVID and MCO, I had to change my method from experiment to simulation. Without further ado, let's get started. This is my oral presentation overview. I will start off with introduction, then problem statement, objective, scopes, literature review, methodology, result discussion, and lastly, conclusion. This is a very typical local apartment in Malaysia. Local apartment is the effort of Malaysian government to ensure every Malaysian, especially the low income group, has access to an affordable home. According to a research done by Wahi, 56.27% of the residents agree that local apartment has poor thermal comfort, and this is due to poor wind ventilation. And this leads me to my problem statement. The demand for air conditioning is very high in local apartment, and the usage of air conditioning depletes the finite resources and causes various environmental problems, such as the depletion of ozone layer. Therefore, proper study on how the design of low-cost apartment building affects the internal ventilation needs to be done because with appropriate guidelines, low-cost apartment may be built to introduce passive ventilation in the apartment, encourage wind-assisted heat removal, and reduce the dependence on air conditioning. This is the objective of my study, is to obtain the wind profiles surrounding a low-cost apartment in a selected area by performing simulation study using ANSYS Fluent. These are the scopes. A local apartment in Skandar Putri area will be selected for the study. The only arrangement of the apartment selected and by laws for Skandar Putri area will be obtained from the local council when possible. Simulation study on the buildings using ANSYS Fluent will be done to obtain the wind profiles around the buildings and subsequently an analysis of the effect of wind profiles on the ventilation will be done. These are the previous studies on wind profiles around buildings and the one highlighted in the red box are the more significant findings. So, looking at all stated that the beam velocity increases by a small magnitude when the separation distance between buildings decreases. The beam velocity only increases by a small magnitude because of the wind blocking effect and the flow resistance in the passage for smaller passage width. I didn't know yet at all stated that the wind separates upon hitting the building's wind board and it deviates upward, downwards, and around the building. I didn't know yet at all also stated that the downward flow towards the ground is faster due to the gravity acceleration, and this creates a horseshoe vortex at the ground level. Nor is again at all agreed to Arduino Yi at all, and added a few points. The separated wind mixes back together at the back of the building, and this causes the formation of a turbulence flow, and consequently a big region behind the buildings. They also stated that when wind hits the building top edge, the wind velocity increases. This is the selected local apartment in Iskandar Putri. It is the Pangsa Puri Daman Desa Skuda apartment. This apartment complies with the bylaws in terms of floor space and floor plan for local apartment in Malaysia. In order to perform simulation studies using ANSYS Fluent, the buildings have to be scaled down. The ratio was set at 1 to 10 because many attempts such as higher and lower ratio have been made in this simulation study and the results show that the ratio of 1 to 10 gives the best representative of the wind flow. Four case studies have been proposed based on two factors, which are the number of apartment buildings and the separation distance between apartment buildings. And these are the case studies based on the number of apartment buildings involved. This is the case study one with only a single building, and this is the case study two with three buildings, and the investigate building is the last building or the third building. These two case studies are to investigate and compare the differences in wind behavior surrounding the buildings when the number of buildings increases. And these two case studies are based on the separation distance between buildings. This is case study three, with separation distance of one meter. And this is case study four, with separation distance of two meter. And for these two case studies, the investigate building is the building in the middle, the green one here. These two case studies are to investigate and compare the differences in wind behavior surrounding the buildings when the separation distance between buildings increases. Thus, is the simulation setup means it's fluent. This simulation setup was designed according to the major CFD recommendations and the previous researchers. This is the computational domain, and this is the building. The computational domain was designed such that the inflow, ledger, and top boundaries were set 5H away from the building, which is 
here, as you can see here, five feet away, five feet away, where H is the height of the building, which in this case was 1.5 meter. Meanwhile, the outflow boundary was at 15H, as you can see here, behind the building to allow the flow to fully redevelop. The mesh in our study has to be fine enough to provide sufficient resolution of the necessary flow features and geometrical structures. Structural hexahedral grid was used, adoptive sizing of the mesh was applied, resolution was set at seven, smooth transition inflection with transition ratio of 0.272 was used. This is how the meshing of the computational domain and the building look like. And these are the boundary conditions used. Realizable K epsilon model was used because she et al claimed that this model can provide superior performance for flows involving rotation, boundary condition under strong adverse pressure gradient separation, as well as recirculation. Simple algorithm was used for the pressure velocity coupling because it is robust for steady state and single phase flow problems. Second order differencing was used for pressure, momentum, turbulence, energy equations because it is more accurate than the first order, even though it is harder to converge as compared to the first order. Solver used was pressure based solver with absolute velocity formulation, and the solutions were steady state. This is the result of case study one. As you can see from the figure here, when the wind hits the building surface perpendicularly, the wind separates at the center of the building. The point where the wind separates is known as stagnation point, and it has the highest pressure and lowest velocity. The wind separates because of the pressure difference on the windward surface. When the wind flow reaches the windward surface, which has the higher pressure, it tends to go to the lower pressure region, which are the upwards, downwards, and sidewards of the building. Backflow or recirculation flow exists behind the leeward of the building. And this happens because of pressure difference as well. Leeward is a region of low pressure. Therefore, the wind tends to flow there and this causes the weight region to form at the back of the building. This is the weight region. This is the result of case study two. There are a total of three buildings involved in this case study. And the last building is the investigated building. Similar to case study one, wind separation is observed at the wind wall of the first building and weight region is observed behind the investigated building. It is also observed that wind does not separate at the wind ward of the investigated building, which is here, because the input wind to the investigated building is the rotating vortices created by the backflow of the second building, not the atmospheric wind like the first case study. Comparing the result of case study one and case study two, the first graph here is a graph of velocity against building height for wind wall and lee wall surface of both case studies. And the second graph is a graph of velocity against building length for wind wall and lee wall surface of both case studies. As you can see from the first graph, velocity increases with height. This applies to the wind wall and lee wall surface of both case studies, and it happens due to the pressure gradient increasing with height and more surface friction exists near the ground level, slows down the wind velocity, and lesser density of air at higher level causes the air to move more easily and consequently faster. The point here does not follow the trend because it is where the stagnation point locates and it has the lowest velocity. From the second graph, it can clearly be seen that the left and right side of the building have higher velocity than the building center. This also applies to the wind wall and leeward surface of both case studies. The both sides of the building have higher velocity than the building center because of there are two combined flows at the both sides of the building, which are the wind separation flow and the wind uniform flow. Comparing the result of case study one and case study two in terms of natural ventilation of a building, pressure gradient plays a very important role in determining natural ventilation of a building. The greater the pressure gradient between the wind wall surface and the leeward surface of a building, the better the natural ventilation of the building. A greater velocity gradient also means a greater pressure gradient. As you can see from this graph here, case study one clearly shows a greater velocity gradient, also greater pressure gradient than case study two. Therefore, case study one has better natural ventilation than case study two. A single building in case study one, of course, is the best in terms of wind ventilation because it has access to wind all around, except the apartment unit located at the center of the building where the stagnation point locates due to the wind flow at this location is minimal. However, 
having buildings in front of the university building, like case study two, does not necessarily mean poor beam ventilation because this arrangement helps to remove the selection point on the building surface and thus provides a good wind flow supply for ventilation purposes. But if we are to compare both case study one and case study two in terms of beam ventilation, case study one has better beam ventilation than case study two. Comparing the result of case study one and case study two in terms of external force conversion, wind velocity outside the house has a proportional relationship with the heat transfer rate from a building. High wind velocity outside a building increases the heat transfer rate from a building. As we are of just now, the upper level of a building has higher velocity than lower level of a building. Therefore, the upper level of a building has higher heat transfer rate than the lower level of a building. More heat can be carried away by the high wind velocity at the upper level of a building. Despite the heat loss being better at the upper level of a building, the upper level of a building has its limitation too. The heat conduction through the roof into the building during the day is more significant at the upper level of a building compared to the lower level of a building. And this results in the upper level of a building getting more heat as compared to the lower level of a building. This is a result of case study 3 and case study 4. As you can see from the figures here, both case studies actually display the similar wind pattern. Wind separation occurs at the windward of all three buildings. Meanwhile, at the back of all three buildings, recirculation flow or back flow are observed, and this causes the formation of fake regions behind the buildings. Comparing the result of case study 3 and case study 4, the first graph here is a graph of velocity against building heights for both case studies, and the second graph is a graph of velocity against building length for left and right building surface of both case studies. As you can see from the first graph, Similar to case study 1 and 2, when the building height increases, wind velocity increases. And this applies to both case study 3 and 4. The reason why is explained just now. For the second graph, it is noticed that wind velocity is higher when the separation distance is smaller. Case study 3 here has smaller separation distance, therefore it has higher velocity. And this happens because of Venturi effect. That causes the reduction in wind pressure and thus increase in wind velocity when wind flows through a constricted section, such as a passage between buildings. Broken et al. added that the wind velocity increases only by a small magnitude in spite of the reduction of the separation distance between buildings. As you can see here, when the separation distance of the buildings decreases, the wind velocity only increases by a very small magnitude, which in our case is only one meter per second. They added on saying that, this happens because of wind blocking effects and flow resistance in the passage for smaller passage width. Wind blocking effect means that the wind will rather flow around and flow over the buildings than being forced through the passage. Comparing the result of case study 3 and case study 4 in terms of natural ventilation of a building. As mentioned just now, the greater the pressure gradient in a building, the better the natural ventilation in a building. This is the left and right building surface of case study 3, and this is the left and right building surface of case study 4. This result clearly shows us that case study 3 has greater velocity gradient, also greater pressure gradient, and thus better natural ventilation than case study 4. But in general, not much difference in pressure gradient is observed between these two case studies. Therefore, it can be concluded that the separation distance between buildings has not much effect on the wind ventilation of the buildings. However, the results here are not really conclusive enough because the separation distance investigated here in this study is quite limited. It's just one meter and two meters of separation distance being investigated. Comparing the result of case study three and case study four in terms of external force convection. As we have reached just now, high beam velocity outside a building increases the heat transfer rate from a building. Since the buildings in case study three has higher beam velocity than buildings in case study four, therefore the heat transfer rate in the buildings in case study three is higher than case study four. The upper level of a building also has higher beam velocity, therefore, it has higher transfer rate too. Consequently, it loses more heat as compared to the lower level of a building. The objective of this study is achieved. Among the conclusions that can be drawn is, when the height of the building increases, the beam velocity increases too. When the separation distance between buildings reduces, the beam velocity increases by a small magnitude. High beam velocity outside the house increases the heat transfer rate from the house, consequently promoting better heat loss from the house. In order to improve the natural ventilation in the building and reduce the reliance on air conditioning, factors such as wind directions, height, and perhaps even separation distance have to be considered when planning the arrangement of buildings in an area. Thank you. Terima kasih.